today I want to go over how I do agar. First things first, let's go through what is needed to do agar for mushroom cultivation. First thing first is you're going to need a scale, a wooden spoon, a glass measuring cup, filter. You're going to need something to pour the agar out of. I like to use whiskey bottles for my agar or even a growler. These filter discs are great. For agar, uh, we use malt extract and agar agar to mix MEA and a little bit of Vaseline for the pressure cooker. I'll get into that in a minute. So I, I really like to use these whiskey bottles. Best thing about using whiskey bottles is you get free whiskey and then you have a perfect agar bottle to use. These are 750 ml bottles and they, they last a long time. Growler bottles are great too. The only problem is they often do break uh, a little bit quicker than the whiskey bottle. So today I'm going to just show you how we convert a growler bottle into a perfect agar bottle. So I'm going to do that right now. So to prevent these bottles from boiling over, I like to drill a hole in the cap. That way we can screw the cap on really tight. I love a filter patch inside here. An alternative to this is if you don't want to drill a hole, you can just loosen the cap like this, but you definitely need to open these bottles in front of the flow hoods. Whereas one of the advantages of, of putting a filter in here is you can take these out in unsterile conditions and then wipe them down with alcohol. So I'm going to be converting this bottle, which all I'm going to be doing is just drilling a hole through the cap. Just like that. And then you can pick up these filter discs at Fungi Perfecti. These are really great. Um, these are just a synthetic filter disc. They, they've literally lasted for I don't know, seven years since I've been since I started this. I haven't bought these in a long time. So we're, we're just going to trace these out and get a filter patch to fit into this bottle. So I'm just going to cut this to size. It might take a couple tries to get the perfect fit. There you go, that's perfect. So this will be a really awesome addition to my bottles. Now, really important is we're going to I'm going to mix the contents that goes in these bottles. We're going to fill them about 60 to 70% full, and then when we fill up our cooker, our pressure cooker and sterilize these, we want the water level to be about at least half of the bottle. And that's going to help regulate the cool down and the bottles they don't run the risk of breaking if we let these bottles cool down slowly so especially when it's colder out this time of year we want to actually bring our cookers into the lab to cool down because they can cool down too quickly outside but having having water go up to at least half of the bottle will help the the bottles cool down a little bit slower and prolong the life of your agar bottle So now I want to show you guys how I make my malt extract agar or, or otherwise known as MEA. I like to premix my own and I simply just buy malt extract and malt extract you can find at any local brewery supply store. I like to buy the light powder and it's really relatively cheap. It's about five to six dollars a pound. So for today we're going to premix some MEA and we're going to do 100 grams of the malt extract and a 100 grams of agar agar. And your uh, your weights don't need to be absolutely perfect. Anything close will do. You can buy premixed. There's lots of reputable com uh, companies where you can buy MEA premixed and it might have some other ingredients inside but it's it's definitely a lot cheaper to do it yourself and it's it's really simple you know we just we just do 50 50 malt extract 
and agar agar i've been doing this for five years now i don't even worry about uh of switching my my agar recipes around i've never seen any any downside to using strictly mea for all of my species um, contrary to what you might read so i'm going to do another 100 grams of the agar agar and get that as close to 100 grams as i can and i'm just going to mix that with the malt extract and i just label a bottle mea and i'm going to give it a good shake and then when i want to do agar i just pull from my mea bottle and i'll, I'll just have these bottles pre-made so I can use them when I want and uh, you know coffee filters a great way great way to mix weigh out your measurements and dump it into the containers it's uh, it's you know any way you want to do it really but I, uh, I I like to do usually about 200 grams of mixed solution at a time that'll last me a few months all you need is a good shake and there you go pre-mixed MEA Next we're going to take our MEA and I want to measure 100 grams to do 80 plates and we need to mix that with 2 liters of water. The standard recipe for malt extract is 50 grams per liter for 40 plates. I like to do a bunch of plates when I'm doing this because it does take time. Uh, it's it's about a six to seven hour process from start to finish so it's nice to have a bunch of plates made up so in order to get all the agar to fully mix in solution we're actually going to bring this to almost a boil and I'm actually going to want to get a blender and blend everything up so that we get a really nice smooth mixture so you need to account for water loss because we are heating it up but you're also going to get agar sticking to the pot and when we pour the plates you're going to get agar sticking in the bottle so for this reason I'm going to add 2.6 liters of water to 100 grams of MEA and this is going to offset any evaporation any uh, agar that sticks to the pot or, or the whiskey bottles itself and then I'm just going to stir it with a spoon and mix it in but this doesn't really do as good of a job as you'd like so we're going to go one step further and I'm going to take one of those immersion blenders and start blending the solution so that I can get all the agar and the sugars mixed thoroughly and hopefully have a really nice smooth mix to pour my plates but I like to take this one step further I actually preheat my agar in a pot and I'm just going to keep stirring it and heating it up so that the sugars will get absorbed into the water so that we don't have any clumps in our agar when we're pouring our plates. So we're just constantly stirring it. We don't want it to burn and we're just watching that it doesn't actually boil. We're just trying to bring it up to temp. Next we're ready to pour our agar solution into our whiskey bottles or in this case I have one growler bottle as well. I want to mix the solution evenly in the bottles and I'm going to use this container that has a spout on it. It's really great for pouring agar, something that I just happen to have lying around the house. It's what my wife used for baking, but you can obviously use anything. So really important is you want to put a glove on the hand that you're going to hold the bottle. A couple reasons the bottle is going to get hot because the agar is hot and if you get any agar dripping down the bottle onto your hand the glove is going to help protect that. So now I'm just going to pour this agar solution evenly between the three bottles. This, this process is relatively straightforward. Again, I'm just pouring over my pot in case there's any spills, my agar will go back into the pot. A thing to note is uh, having this agar preheated really is a nice solution to work with, especially if you're pouring test tubes. You really want to have the liquid pour easily into your containers. So once you have your bottles filled with agar solution, you're going to want to screw those caps on that have the holes in it and the filter patch screw them tight or snug to fit and the great thing about having these caps with the filter patches on them is you're able to sterilize and then unload them in unsterile conditions and bring them into the lab if necessary 
So in order to prevent boil over, you don't want to fill these bottles too full. In this, in this case, I filled these bottles about 40% full, and I'm going to be filling our pressure cookers with about 4 liters of water. I also like to wrap the lids of the jars with tin foil just to prevent any moisture getting absorbed through the filter patch during sterilization. Again, this is probably not necessary, but I still think this is a great way to keep things sterile. This way you know your agar solution hasn't absorbed any moisture through the filter patch during sterilization. So the final step is now we need to sterilize our agar. So we're going to get our pressure cooker back on this burner. And if you notice by looking inside, there's about four liters of water inside. Maybe that's just under a third of the cooker filled with water. You want to make sure that your sterilizer has a stable base. I've had to elevate this sterilizer with some bricks so it's not directly sitting on the burner. So now we're ready to load our whiskey bottles and growler filled with agar solution into our pressure cooker. And I want to show you this one trick to keep your metal to metal seal lasting a long time. We like to use a little bit of Vaseline just around the edge of our cooker. And this actually helps moisturize the metal seal. So I'm just going to be taking a little bit of that on my finger and I'm going to be rubbing that all along the edge and just getting that smooth edge to take a little bit of the Vaseline in, rub that around, and then I'm actually going to take a paper towel and wipe it completely off. And then we're actually removing all that excess grease, and I'm going to do that on the lid as well. Now we're going to take the lid and get that on. One thing to note is there's a gap between the lid and the cooker, you want that to be even all the way around, otherwise steam is going to leak out and it doesn't matter how much Vaseline you put on that seal. So you want to visually get on the ground and look around the whole cooker and make sure that that gap is even. And then you want to tighten the lug nuts of the cooker evenly on opposite sides. You're just trying to get this so that the lid doesn't move. And then you're going to go around and do a final tighten, again op opposite sides. And finally, one at a time just to make sure everything is snug. This way the lid is going to be on even and you shouldn't get any steam leaks. So I'm going to sterilize our agar for an hour and a half, let it cool down for two hours and then pour in the lab hot. I had a lot of fun making this video. This is a video that I've actually been meaning to do for years and really it's just it's a really in-depth involved video on how to do agar step-by-step -step process and these videos take a lot of time so I'm really happy that I was able to put this out for you guys today. If you guys want to learn more about my business, I have this awesome education opportunity called The Mentorship. Website details below. My website is wtfmushrooms.com. Check out The Mentorship. We always do an early bird discount. You get to save $400. We're booking into 2019. You're going to get to do stuff just like this and really we just have a lot of fun. You guys get to learn about my business. So anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Oh,